Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Um, I just wanted to make kind of a quick and dirty video about a thing I designed that I'm excited about. Um, this is a super, super over-engineered test strip maker. Um, it solves what I think are a couple of quality of life problems with the traditional approach to test strips. So, uh, if you've ever done any darkroom printing, you know test strip is... Um, you basically just take usually a strip, which is where it got its name, um, but a little bit of paper, and then you'll uncover parts of it as you go and test different times, uh, different exposure times on different parts of the strip, and then that will help you kind of dial in where you want your final exposure to be for the print. So I did it that way for years, and you know what? It works fine. But uh, I just, there were a couple things that bothered me about it. First of all, I didn't love that. Um, it was kind of hard sometimes to compare different areas of the strip because uh, it's like apples to oranges, right? Like, you know, this area of the strip that you exposed for four seconds, maybe it was supposed to look lighter than this other section that you exposed for 12 seconds. That And so you're like, you're not sure if it got darker because you exposed it more or too much or if, or if it's just because that's a darker part of the image. Um, so this that's kind of the big thing this thing solves. The idea behind this, is that it um, it allows you to expose the same piece of image in in four different strips so you can compare apples to apples that way so the way that works um, is let me show you uh, the, the 3d model here um, <clears throat> you've got four pieces to this print um, there's kind of a hollow housing it's got a few holes for screws and stuff like that and magnets and then the top of it that gets screwed on and that's got like a one inch wide slit that's the kind of lets a little chunk of the paper get exposed at one time and then sliding into that you have this little carriage so this is just a little thing you've got the holes for some magnets in there and a handle that sticks out but this basically holds a, a piece of paper that is two and a half by four inches so that's exactly one eighth of an eight by ten so it's, it's pretty um I can be pretty stingy with my paper, which I kind of like. Um, and uh, the carriage goes inside of this housing, and then you can see it um, it slides to different positions. But your your whole thing isn't moving underneath the projected image under the enlarger, and so you're exposing the same part of the image onto each section of the test strip. So. Um, the other thing that I changed when I designed this, or I, I don't know, this isn't really anything to do with the design, it's just something that I started doing around the same time as I used this design, or as I made this design, and that is uh, putting, working in terms of stops instead of seconds. So I used to uh, expose a strip of the test strip for like, I don't know, five seconds or something, and then uncover another little piece and expose it for another two seconds, and then uncover another piece and give it another two seconds and step up in seconds um, and then I would you know you could solve a kind of a ballpark for where you want it to be um, but if you do it in stops instead and using this table that I shamelessly pulled out of um, shoot what's the book called uh, way beyond monochrome um, he, he advocates pretty hard for using stops instead of seconds in the darkroom because we do it when we're exposing our film so we probably should use the same system when we're in the darkroom. And it's nice because um, when you're looking at a test strip that you've made in terms of stops it gives you a lot more information about like um, exactly how long you might want to dodge and burn a different area to get it down exactly you know one more stop or something like that so that's kind of nice. Um, so I, I have a printout of this PDF just right underneath my darkroom timer just taped to the wall. Um, I will make a link to this PDF in the notes below so feel free to grab a copy of that if you want it. I, I've really loved working in stops instead. So you can see here, um, from here to here is one stop. From here to here is one stop, which means these are third stops, these lines here, and you can go to sixth stops or even twelfth stops if you want to. So you can get super, super precise, tiny incremental exposure changes by using this chart. Um, so uh, between having a, kind of a nicer way to get test strips so that you have a more easily comparable area on the test strip and working in stops, um, it's really, it's kind of elevated my darkroom game and it's made it, the whole experience of printing, especially like a trickier negative, um, a lot less guesswork, a lot less kind of floundering around trying to get the right exposure and a little bit more precise and scientific and it definitely takes less materials to get to my 
final print that I'm really happy with. So I wanted to just show how to use this. It prints in four pieces. The assembly is pretty straightforward. You can look in the Thingiverse page for kind of the hardware list and stuff, but it's a few magnets and a few screws and you know pretty normal, easy to source type stuff. Um, I've got one right here. This is printed. You're going to want to print it out of something opaque, obviously. I used either, I can't remember which one this is, but um, Pryline Black PETG is great. Um, and uh, eSun PLA Plus, or they, I think they call it PLA Pro, one of the two. Anyway, in black. Both of those are, are pretty good and opaque, and I've designed it such that it's thick enough that um, you don't have to worry about light bleeding through or anything like that. So, um, as you can see, when you've assembled it correctly, it's got magnets that just kind of stop the um, stop the test strip at, at different set locations so that it spaces out the exposures for you, which is kind of a nice quality of life feature. It's also got these four, um, the four feet on it are just, I think, M5 screws, if I'm remembering correctly, but you can adjust them up and down so that you can get the height of the paper in this thing to match the height of the paper in your easel so the focus isn't different between your test strips and your final prints. And it should work with basically any easel, so it's, it's pretty flexible in that way. Um, and I'm just gonna switch over to a different camera view really quick, if I can turn this thing on. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still getting getting over a little bit of a cold, so I probably sound terrible. Um, but I'm going to switch over to a different camera view and uh, just show you how to use it. Um, sorry for the giant hotspot. My lighting setup here is not exactly ideal. Um, so you just, I will usually set up my easel first, um, compose my my shot, or you know, compose the image in the enlarger, um, focus it, everything like that, and then I'll just move the enlarger or move the easel out of the way and put this down and you'll want to align this little strip kind of on an area of the of the image that will give you a lot of information so I try to include um, either the most important part of the image like if it's a portrait I like to include the face so I can make sure I get the exposure right there or if it's like a nature photography kind of a thing I'll try to include like a, a dark black and a, and a bright highlight in the same area of the strip here that is that's how I align it under the image um, I like to use a little bit of this white poster sticky tack underneath the four feet. That's uh, perhaps a little bit inelegant of a solution, um, but it does stop. <laughs> it does stop it from sliding around when I don't want it to. So it kind of helps it stay grounded when you're moving things around. So um, I'll align this where I want it, press it down nicely, and then. You just pull this carriage out, um, you load a piece of paper into it, again I think I said it already but it's two and a half by four inches. So that's the size of the test strip this thing like uses. So you put that in there and then you can just pop it in and you'll give it um, an exposure and then slide it forwards one step and then another exposure, three and then four. You've got four different exposures. Um, so I, for the example image I'm using let me just pull up my chart. I think I was uh, this is a five. I was printing a five by seven and from a thirty-five millimeter negative. So um, pretty short exposures. Uh, you can obviously experiment as much as you need to, or or do your first one and have a really wide gamut of exposure times to kind of get you in the ballpark. But um, I uh, I think I did eight seconds. And let me let me kick this over. Yeah, I did eight seconds. Then. 10.1 uh, seconds, so one third of a stop more than 12.7, and then 16. And uh, so you can see, um, this is just the backside of the actual test strip I made. When you develop it, you get four nice little pieces of image that are spaced out, and they're really easy to compare to each other. And you can you can see it was pretty subtle changes. I was only going in increments of third stops. Um, so I found um, that. The face of the subject, this is my daughter, <laughs> the face is, she's, her face is getting really dark by the time this little highlight in the corner here was showing detail. Um, but I knew that the overall contrast of the image was about right because I, I've already calibrated my zone system development and everything like that for grade two paper. Um, so just because it's a portrait and I wanted it to be a little softer and I knew that there was some highlights that were being a little bit troublesome, I kicked it down to grade one. Um, and then I knew that I wanted this face to be about two stops brighter, and the rest of the image could fall where it, where it would, as long as I didn't have any blown out highlights in the in the bright part of her face where the sun was hitting it. So, using this chart, I was able to say, okay, cool. I'll use this, you know, I'll use this exposure time, and I need to 
burn it or I need to dodge it two stops or minus two stops so you can go back this way or back up this way or whatever but um, you can see I needed a, a total of like four seconds on that on her face instead of 16 to get where I wanted so I knew out of the 16 seconds I needed to dodge the face for 12 of them um, and uh, it worked great um, here's the final print let me just move this thing out of the way <laughs> forgive my sticky tack so here's the final print um it came out really good it took exactly one test strip to get there it barely cost anything to get there and uh i was it you can see that i got you know i was able to avoid getting the face falling into deep shadow and uh, i got detail everywhere else and and the you know i got good contrast and I'm, I'm happy with how it came out so this is rc paper obviously um this is just a picture that i want to just have on my desk at work uh, so I didn't want to deal with curly fiber paper or anything. Um, but this thing works just as well, if not arguably a little bit better with fiber paper. And in fact, I I went so far as to design um, a little drying rack that you can print as well if you want to. Uh, because fiber paper obviously likes to curl a lot. So you can print this uh, without supports and it will... You can hold, I think, up to four. Yeah, it looks like four slots for fiber paper test strips in it, and it will dry nicely and hold it decently flat. And I have, like, a little darkroom book that I keep test strips in usually if I'm keeping records on, like, a particularly complicated print or something like that. And so having the test strips dry flat makes it nice and easy to put them in there. So, um, like I said, pretty over-engineered. Definitely not really, like, a necessity in every darkroom. But the nice thing about 3D printing is that you can print one of these for like $2 worth of filament and go buy $3 worth of hardware. And for me, it's turned out to be a, a very useful, really kind of fun to use tool in the darkroom. And I, it's made my time in the darkroom even that much more enjoyable. So I wanted to share that with you guys. And uh, there's a link to the Thingiverse page down below if you want to go print it. And leave me a comment. Let me know if you have any questions or, or comments or anything like that. Thanks for watching.